week on the Gadget Show Web TV, Otis and I are experimenting with our mobile phones. And John's got a first look at the Canon EOS 5D Mark II SLR camera. Plus the latest in gadget tech news. Welcome once again to the Gadget Show studio and Web TV. Later, Otis will be here with a bit of mobile phone science for you. But first, here's John with a first look at the Canon EOS 5D Mark II camera. Canon's new EOS 5D Mark II is a very keenly anticipated new camera. That's because it replaces the original 5D, which was launched about three years or so ago, which proved itself extremely popular with landscape photographers and photojournalists. That's because it included a full-sized 35mm sensor, which meant you got good pictures in low light conditions, you got extremely good image quality for landscapes and the like, and yet also experienced photographers could use it with their old 35mm lenses without having to worry about changes in focal lengths and so on. Now, instead of going to some photojournalistic location or some magnificent landscape to try out the new 5D, I've come instead to the Birmingham Nature Centre with its splendid collection of animals. There are quite a few headline improvements. You now get over 21 megapixels rather than 12. You get a much improved LCD screen on the back of the camera and you get a built-in dust reduction system. At the same time, the sensitivity range has been extended. You can actually go right up to 25,600 ISO, which puts it on a par with the top-of-the-range cameras from Nikon. The actual image quality is still very good indeed, right across the board. It's got excellent colour rendition, it's good at the low sensitivity ratings and also at the high ones. And at the same time, the camera isn't actually that much bigger, so it's still highly portable for use by landscape photographers and photojournalists. <laughs> Though the sensor really does show up the quality of your lenses, Talking of which, though, the 24 to 105 millimeter sort of kit lens, which does come with the camera in some markets, is a very good one. It's got a very useful range from wide angle to semi telephoto, and it's f4 throughout the range, which gives you a reasonable amount of light without having the enormous size, say, of an f. 2.8 lens. Very good, very good optical quality throughout and the images will be very printable right up to 6400 ISO. You can get quite decent sized prints even at that sensitivity. And of course that's not just useful in low light situations because it means you can use really big telephoto lenses as well and not get worried about the camera shape because you can use sufficiently higher shutter speed. I've got one of Canon's enormous lenses here. This 600mm f4 with image stabilisation is great for getting close shots of these white naped cranes. It also shoots high definition video at 30 frames a second. Although it's quite a different experience to shooting video with a camcorder. You actually use the live view mode and use the screen at the back of the camera. I imagine that it'll be pretty useful for photojournalists, for example, they don't have to decide whether to shoot a video of the plane landing in the water in front of them. You can actually shoot video and you can shoot stills at the same time. Now, unfortunately, you do get a break in the video when you're shooting a still, so uh, video journalists will still have that difficult problem of uh, knowing whether to take a still or not, and I think that will actually restrict its usefulness. I don't think the 5D Mark II will be for everybody, though. The shutter response is a bit slow. Also, the autofocusing system seems very similar to the one on the old 5D. Not bad, but could do with being a, a little faster. I still don't like the on-off switch down here. I'd much prefer one round the shutter release. Also, it doesn't have a built-in flash, and there are always occasions in emergencies when you really do need a built-in flash. Having said all that, though, I think it's a really brilliant camera and a, and a great replacement for the old 5D.
Right, now it's time for the news. And bearing the current credit crisis in mind, Nikon have announced three new additions to its Coolpix range. The L19, L20 and L100 all offer some high-quality features at a price that won't break the bank. The 10-megapixel L20 and the 8-megapixel L19 compact cameras both offer full auto mode, scene auto select, smile mode and blink warning, which is a great feature for those of you who happen to blink at that all-important snap moment. Now, the L100 is a 10-megapixel shoot with a 15x zoom and an impressive 28mm wide angle to 420 super telephoto lens, which is perfect for getting those detailed pictures. And if you set it in macro mode, it will capture objects as close as 1cm. It also makes for a great sports photography camera because it has four anti-blur features, and when you set it in continuous mode, it can shoot up to 13 frames per second. The L100 is available from March and costs around £240, whereas the L19 and L20 compact cameras are available from February and prices start from £99. Now, speaking of cameras, there are rumours that Samsung are to announce the very first 12 megapixel camera phone. Now, Samsung were the first manufacturer to release an 8 megapixel camera phone, the Innovate, and it looks as if they'll be the first to announce and launch a 12 megapixel handset. And I'm guessing that if these rumours do indeed turn out to be true, they'll be announced this year's Mobile World Congress, which happens later this month. However, there are rumours that Sony Ericsson might also be releasing a 12 megapixel version, so I'm guessing it's just a case of wait and see. But if Samsung do bring out a 12 megapixel handset first, it'll only be a matter of time before the other manufacturers jump on the bandwagon. Right, now it's time for a bit of science with our new presenter, Otis. He's been testing out the radiation on his mobile phone to see if he can make tinfoil move. Today we're filming the road trip special and a bit of my downtime I found on the web something truly astounding. Come with me and I'll demonstrate to you. Oh, oh. I'll need someone else who I can wow in the flesh. Would you like to be wowed? I would like to be wowed. Then come with me. Check this out, right? I saw it online, okay. so it has to be true. You take a small piece of aluminium foil and you put it on a needle or a straightened out paper clip. What I am about to show you is low level microwaves from the mobile phone, because I'm going to call one with the other, moving the foil. Moving the foil. Moving the foil. So I'm going to call right. one phone with the other to generate this field of electromagnetism. And try and get it to spin. It will spin. Okay. I saw it online. Here we go. Calling you now. I need you to answer your phone okay. so we have an open connection. Okay, now hold it close. And answer it, yeah? Yes, answer it, answer it. And, and move it round and watch as the aluminium foil stays exactly where it is. Okay, that went very badly. Uh, thus proving that what I saw online is a myth. Sorry to drag you all the way up I know, here. I'm very disappointed. Sorry. Right, well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week, but Web TV will be back at the same time next week. See you then.